everybody, I'm Pia from Stitches and Scraps. Today I'm going to show you how to work the hem and bind off and attach the button on the Simply Sweet Raglan baby sweater. I've finished the last round of the body and I've reached the stitch marker so I know I'm at the end of the round. So now I'm ready to start the hem. I went ahead and cut the tail of the lighter color, leaving a tail to weave in later um, because I'm going to switch to the darker color now. So I grab the darker color and I make a little loop so that I have a tail to weave in and that's probably too long there. I make a little loop like that so I have a tail to weave in and I place that loop, well I knit with that loop is what it is. So I'm going to slip this stitch marker and then go ahead and knit the next stitch with this loop. Okay, and to lock this tail in place, I'm actually going to slide it over the top of my first stitch there so that I get that tension locked in. There we go, and then I just let it drop. And I'm going to knit all the way around, one full round. I have not changed needles yet. I'm just knitting this round to get a nice clean color change, basically. And we're going to do a little trick at the end of the round to stop that awkward jog that you sometimes get with changing colors because as you know when you're working in the round you're actually working kind of a spiral so the last stitch of the round is higher or further up it's it's at the level of the next round um, so you get a little jog in the colors and there's a little trick i'm going to do to minimize that so let me knit all the way around and then i will show you that trick I've made it all the way back around to the start of my round and you can see this stitch is really loose um, but just pull on the tail and it'll be fine. The trick to make a jogless color change actually happens in the first stitch of the next round but before I get there first I'm going to change out my needles to my smaller needle set. Now if you don't have interchangeables you'll just knit the next round with your smaller needle set and that will trans transfer all of the stitches over to the smaller needles. But I'm going to go ahead and switch these out with my interchangeables here. I've switched out both needles and somehow managed not to lose my stitch marker. So I'm going to slip that over to start the next round. Now here's that little trick I told you and it's very simple. We're just going to slip our first stitch. And what that does is that puts this last stitch and the first stitch sort of at the same level and it brings this up a little bit and brings this down a little bit so that our round seems more seamless. Now, I don't like having this gap here while I'm working. I know when I weave in the tail, it's going to go away, but for right now, I, I, kinda, I kinda want it to go away right now. So I am going to bring this around and kind of lock it in place on my next stitch. So I've slipped the first stitch. Now I'm setting up for ribbing and the first stitch is gonna be a knit stitch normally. So I'm going to purl the next stitch and then just to tuck that stitch into place, when I knit the next stitch, I'm putting it over my needle. And that is just a temporary tuck while I'm working. Later on, when I actually weave in the end, I will probably take it out of there. It's just so that I don't have to deal with a floppy end right now. So that is setting up the beginning of the round and that gives us kind of more of a seamless join, less of a jog. Now I'm just gonna keep knitting in ribbing. So first stitch that we slipped counts as a knit. Purl, knit. So next stitch is gonna be a purl. Knit, purl, and so on and so forth all the way around. For as many rows as the pattern calls for, for the size that you're working on. And it's going to vary, um, some of the sizes have different rows. So do the number of rows that, are indicated in the pattern and when you're all done we'll look at how to bind off the ribbing. I finished the ribbing on my sweater and I'm ready to bind it off. I've removed the round stitch marker because I no longer need that. You may notice that I have switched needles. I'm now using these Knit Picks Options needles which Knit Picks sent me for this project and to review. I would have used them all along except due to an error on my part I only just now got them. 
So you have a few options for doing this bind off. You could bind off in pattern, just like we did when we bound off these few stitches for the buttonholes. Just knit the knits, purl the purls, and bind them off like you normally would. And you can look back at that part of the tutorial um, if you wanna see how that worked. But I prefer this bind off, which is called a tubular bind off. Now, I get a lot of funny responses when I say that because there are actually two completely separate bind offs that are called tubular bind offs. The idea of a tubular bind off is that the bottom should look like it's just part of a tube that rolls all the way around, right? So some versions of a tubular bind off involve actually knitting extra rows where you separate out the knits and the purls into two separate layers and then you graft them together so you actually have a little tube that rolls over the edge. That is a tubular bind off. This is also a tubular bind off, but it's a simpler sewn tubular bind off where we're just going to use the tail yarn to sew the knits and the purls together as though we were grafting them. So this is also called a tubular bind off, but if you just Google tubular bind off, you're going to find different tutorials for different methods. So let's look at how to do a sewn tubular bind off. For this bind off, I've cut my tail into a length that's about three times around the whole circumference of the bottom of the sweater. If that's too much for you to work with, depending on the size you're making, you can do part of the bind off, then weave in a new tail and do the rest of the bind off. But if you can do it all in one go, that's the easiest, at least I think that's the easiest. Every stitch in this bind off gets worked through twice, once as a purl and once as a knit. And depending whether it's a knit stitch or a purl stitch, that order flips. So generally the order of operations is knit, purl, purl, knit. But with the first two stitches, you always do something a little different to get it set up. Now the normal way to do it is to do the second half. So you do the purl and then you do a knit and then you start your bind off. But I'm gonna do something a little bit differently. I'm gonna work through these two stitches only once and then transfer them onto this needle so that I'll work through them again when I get all the way around and they become my last two stitches. So what does that look like? Well, the first part of the repeating pattern of this bind off is to knit through the first stitch. So you insert your needle as though to knit through the first stitch. And then normally for the repeating part of the pattern, you would drop this stitch, but I'm not finished with this stitch. So I'm putting it back onto this needle. Oh, watch out, make sure your yarn's at the back. Putting it back onto this needle. Now the next part is to purl, not through the next stitch, but through the next knit stitch, right? So I've knit through this stitch and now I'm going to purl through this stitch. And I'm saying knit and purl, but what I mean is insert my needle knitwise or insert my needle purlwise. So now I've insert my needle purlwise through this stitch. So now I've worked the first two knit stitches of my row. The next thing I'm gonna do is work the first two purl stitches of the row. So I've gone knit, purl, now I'm going to go purl knit. So I insert my needle into the second stitch purl wise, okay? Pull the yarn through, and now normally I would drop this stitch off my needle, but in this case I'm going to transfer it to the other needle because it's the first two stitches, it's the first purl stitch. Now I'm going to pull this needle out of the way so I don't drop any stitches because I'm not going to need that needle again until the end. So the last thing I did was a purl through that first purl stitch. So now I'm going to go ahead and work as though I'm knitting through this stitch, but I don't wanna cross over this one. So what I'm actually going to do is bring my needle up between the stitches and then go into this knit stitch. You can do that as two separate parts. You can bring it up between the two stitches to get it to the front again, okay? and then you can knit through this stitch if you'd like, or you can do it all in one motion. It really depends on what's more comfortable for you. So now I've moved the first two stitches over and I've worked into the next two stitches once. Now we're gonna work into these two stitches again. And here's where we get the repeating pattern and you can get into a real groove with this and it goes knit, purl, purl, knit. So first it's knit, and then drop that stitch off the needle, and then purl, 
and don't drop that stitch off the needle. Okay, so that's dealing with the two front, the two knit stitches. Now you purl and drop that stitch off the needle. Then you're going to come in between the stitches here and you're going to knit this one. Okay. And I have a much more robust tutorial on this using yarn that's not quite as dark. Um, and I will link to that in the description on this video or in the blog post if you want to see a much longer and more robust tutorial on doing this bind off. So now I've got my next two stitches. Okay, so again, knit through this knit stitch and take it off of the needle. Purl through this knit stitch. See how I've skipped that purl, right? Purl through this knit stitch and go ahead and pull my yarn through. Now I do the purl knit. So I purl through this stitch, bring my needle up from between the two stitches and knit through this stitch. Sometimes this is tight and if it's tight, go ahead and bring your needle up all the way and then do the knit part. Whatever is more comfortable for you, more steps or lumping it all together twisty into one step. <laughs> so again, knit and take it off, purl and leave it on. Purl and take it off and then come up between the two and knit and leave it on. And you want to make sure your tension for this is similar to the stitches around you because what you should get in the end, if you do it right, you should get this edge that looks like it's sort of seamless, right? It's like the, the ribbing just ended and it kind of just keeps going around. And that's what you're going for. So I'm going to keep doing this all the way around and then I'll show you the end two stitches when we get there. But one more time and then I'll, then I'll fast forward here. So knit and drop, purl. Okay. Purl and drop and then up from behind and knit. Just like that. I've gone all the way around and I'm down to my last four stitches. Now, if you'll remember, these two stitches are actually the first stitches we worked. So they've already been worked through once. Remember, each of the stitches gets worked through twice. So let's continue in our knit, purl, purl, knit pattern we've been doing. The first one is knit and we drop it, right? And the second one is purl, but now this one's already been knit through. So now this one is done too and could be dropped, okay? So let's do this one, purl, and drop it. And then this one could also be dropped, right? So we drop that one too. So we've done this purl, and then we knit through this one. And guess what? We can drop that one too. So that is how you finish it, because the last two have already been worked through. And you might get a little bit of a loose tension here, but you should get a pretty seamless join. Um, and once you stretch things out and block them, they will be much more even. Now I do want to show you also this jog that we did earlier. If you remember, let me tighten up the tail here because this is where we joined our new color. If you remember, we did a slipped stitch earlier and you can see how that has kind of evened out this join here. So you don't get that little step where this stitch is lower than this one. So that's what that little jog did for us. And this, I know this looks twisted here, but once you weave in this tail properly, that should flatten out. Because remember, you have the, the tail here where we join the new color. So once you weave that in across this join, that should flatten out much better. And that is how you bind off the hem. So if we zoom out now, we can see that we have this hem that's very elastic and it looks like the ribbing just never ended right? The ribbing just kind of keeps going and going and going. You can cut this off and I went three times around. You can see I've got quite a bit of extra tail. So you could probably do two and a half times around. Let's see how much I've got left. Yeah, I've got one full revolution left. So you could do two, maybe two and a half times around to give yourself enough to work with. Um, but I like my general rule is three times around because I feel like I'm more secure if I have more yarn rather than less. 
So now I'm leaving enough of a tail to weave in later and I'm gonna cut it right here. And you can go ahead and weave these in if you want now um, or wait till the end, whatever your preference is. But the hem is now done. Now it's time to sew on the button. I have a pattern for this little crochet button that I made, which I will link to in the description. But you can also use any button that will fit through your buttonhole. And this one's a little tight, but it'll get smaller once I sew it on, because um, I sew through it a couple times when I do that. But that is my button. So how do we figure out button placement? Well, the best way that I like to do is I like to lay everything flat, make sure it's all nice and even here, okay? And lay the buttonhole on top of the rest of the collar just where it's going to rest. Don't pull it too tightly. This is where I want it to rest so it doesn't pucker or anything like that. Now I'm going to take a small safety pin or a stitch marker or whatever you have and I'm going to very carefully insert the safety pin into the buttonhole and only pick up underneath the buttonhole, that underneath layer, and put my safety pin in. Now I remove the buttonhole and my safety pin is marking exactly where I want to sew in my button. So now it's just a matter of sewing the button in right in that spot. And then I'll weave in those ends and I will have the button attached. And there we go. That is my button completed. So in our next step, we will be picking up stitches from this raglan edge, the ones that we put on waist yarn. We will be picking up these stitches plus a few underarm stitches to start working on the sleeves. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, share it with your friends, or leave me a comment. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel for more great videos. Thanks for watching!